Hello students, today we are going to discuss about the chapter motion. Motion is one of the most important chapter of the physics. So let's start. First topic is motion. When you hear the word motion, you are start thinking about the things which are moving, like moving bike, a moving car, moving train, moving bus, moving aeroplane, and birds are flying. The blood is moving in your body continuously 24 hours and the movement of earth around the sun. These all are the examples of motion. I know you all understand this concept, but what is the definition of motion? How you define the motion? So here we go. Um, when an object changes its position with respect to surrounding and time, then that object is said to be in motion. Now, I am here in this side of board. Now I am changing my position and I am here on the other side of board. I was in motion. So now I am continuously changing my position with respect to my surrounding and time. Now I am in motion. With respect to surrounding means with respect to this board, I am moving. I am continuously changing my position and with respect to time means time is also changing before <clears throat> one second i was there now i'm here and here so time is also changing so a body which is changing its position with respect to surrounding and time is said to be at motion now uh, second term is rest when when an object does not change its position with respect to its surrounding and time, then it is said to be at rest. Now observe me. One second, two second, three second, four second, five second. I am not changing my position with respect to time as well as with respect to my surrounding. I am at rest. So <clears throat> now the third thing is motion and uh, rest are relative. The motion and rest are relative because a, a body can be at rest as well as in motion at the same time. So here is the example. Suppose you are moving in a bus. This is bus. Here are you in this bus going to picnic with your friend. A person standing here is observing you. The bus is moving according to that person you are in motion because you are changing your position with respect to him. And according to you in the bus, this person is also in motion because he is also changing his position with respect to you because when you pass by a him and that person will move backward. As you see the trees from the window of your bus, they are all moving backwards. So they are in motion with respect to you. But are you with, uh, at motion with respect to your friend in the bus, inside the bus? Like you are here A and your friend is B. Are you in motion with respect to your friend? No. Because you are not changing your position with respect to your friend, you are at rest. But according to this person, see, you are changing your uh, you are changing your position. So you are in motion. So a body can be at rest as well as can be in motion at the same time. Uh, <coughs> let's uh, we discuss it with. Another example, suppose you are watching this video uh, lying on your bed and you are at rest. You are properly at rest. You are not changing your position. You are watching this video. An astronaut from the space is observing you. According to that astronaut, you are in motion because Earth is moving and you are changing your position with respect to surrounding according to that astronaut. So you are at rest according to you, but you are in motion according to that astronaut.
so a body can be at rest as well as in motion at the same time now next point is reference point to define any kind of motion you need a reference point suppose i said to you my house is 5 km but from where my house is 5 km from school or from bus stand from railway station from where if i said my house is 5 km from school so i give you a reference point school is the reference point from which my house is 5 km far so to define any kind of motion you need a reference point and that reference point is also known as origin so to define any kind of motion you need a reference point then here is first point the distance so we know that we need a reference point suppose it is o and you travel a distance 5 km to point a so here you cover the distance so what is the distance if you go this side here 2 km and then 5 km again and here is the point b and c how much distance you cover 5 km 2 km and 5 km the 12 km distance you cover according to this but what is about this the displacement what is your displacement your displacement is not 12 km now first we define the distance then we explain about the uh, displacement so distance is total path covered by a body during the motion it is the total path covered by the body during the motion distance is the total path covered by the body during the motion then what is displacement displacement is the distance between initial point and final point here is the initial point initial point from where you started the motion this is the final point where you finished your motion so uh then we can define the displacement as it is the shortest distance between initial position and final position so here are the topics are covered but the one thing is the sa unit of distance is meter and also the sa unit of displacement is meter we represented it with the small letter m and also one thing the uh, distance is a scalar quantity scalar quantity means it is a number with the unit like 12 km total distance is 12 km you need not to define the direction but here displacement is a vector quantity vector quantity has the direction as well as the magnitude you have 12 km with some direction north south here the displacement is oc 2 km suppose it is 2 km then displacement is 2 km towards east or west whatever the uh, direction so the displacement has the direction as well as magnitude but uh, distance has only magnitude so distance is a scalar quantity and displacement is a vector quantity